Hey guys, I just want to come on here and chat with you for a little bit. I hadn't seen you in a while. Seems like life just a little bit busy, don't it? But I'm going to get on here and uh, I'm fixing to make some vinaigrette up. And I'm going to talk about that too. But uh, I just want to get on here and share a few things that you guys probably didn't know about us. I bet y'all didn't know that Mr. Brown and I used to own a a grocery and feed store and I really loved it it was a lot of work though I had little bitty babies on my on both of my hips at that time I had four little ones and I think my youngest when we got in it he was four months old and it was a my uncle and aunt had it before we did and a lot of people in that area it just went down through generations it was an old store and I can't tell you for sure how old it is, 100 years old, I don't know. It was an old store building. Right now, the Mennonites have it, and they have a wonderful business there. And I'm really glad that they ended up with it. But uh, we had it several years, and uh, I really enjoyed it. But like I said, I was a, a young mama with a bunch of kids, but I raised some kids several years in that store, and they done real well. Uh, me and Danny ran it by ourselves. We didn't hire people. We sold a lot of feed out of that store because up there in that community, uh, they're just wanting stores and feed stores very close. So you were able to sell a lot of feed to a lot of farmers. We also had uh, gas and diesel there. Uh, a lot of farmers would come and fill their tractors up and stuff like that. So, And we had a lot of groceries. Uh, I tried to keep the main staples, you know, that people would need up in that area. We had a big deli box, and uh, I sold a lot of lunch meat and cheeses and meat out of it. And we made a lot of sandwiches at lunchtime for the, the crowd that would come in. We even cooked hamburgers. So, you know, I enjoyed it, but it was a lot of work. We were there seven days a week. Um, it took us away from our home life because we'd be there 12 hours a day. I felt like the kids were there more than they were at home, so we had to eventually just kind of sell out and get out of it and do something different. But I'm so happy that we had the experience. But anyways, I want to share a few things with you, but I'm also going to, I want to do a review on, a while back I done a video on canning pineapple because I had found a bunch of pineapple on sale and I was so excited about it. And I did can up a bunch of pineapple. And if you ever get a chance to find pineapple on sale, it's well worth it. This pineapple is so good. So I'm so glad I've got some on the shelf. And if I find some more on sale, I'll be doing it again for sure. Um, I also, if y'all watched that video, I made some pineapple vinegar. I took the cores out. And that's what I used to make my vinegar. And I will be doing this again because it turned out really good. Um, I didn't use the, the peelings off the pineapple because, it, for one thing, it wasn't organic. And another thing, I just didn't feel like I could get it clean enough. And I don't know how it would have turned out. It's not, a pineapple skin is not the same as apple or, or pear skin or something like that. It's just not the same. But anyways, I took the core out. The core is where you got a lot of your uh, nutritional benefits from, this core of a pineapple. And pineapples are good for you. Pineapple juice is really good for you. You need to research that. It's really good. Now, when I fermented this pineapple core, I didn't um, start out from raw, which means put it in water and let it ferment. I started out with my vinegar. Because of it being meaty, it's still, you know, the core had pineapple flesh still on it. I wasn't sure how that would turn out. But this has set, I know it's set for a month back here in the dark. And it is some of the best stuff. And it makes a wonderful vinaigrette, and that's what we're fixing to do. And my other review is on when I can the mandarins. I'm so glad I did, and I'll do it again. Because these turned out, I made a simple syrup can them up and uh, if we ever get a chance do it it's well worth it and it's easy um, 
you know, it may get to the point someday it's going to be hard for us to get a hold of fruit. So I feel like maybe we need to be putting a lot of fruit on the shelf. That's just, you know, how I feel. I don't know. I try not to worry about that stuff, but fruit is something we will need. So I do. I do. This will be something that I'll continue to do. So it was a good thing. That's a good review on canning fruit. And, of course, when I canned up my pineapple, I made pineapple salsa. And uh, I don't know if y'all have ever tried it. Good stuff. It's really good. It was great on pork. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make me a little bit of vinaigrette. Now I already had some made up here. I don't want to pour it out because this is good stuff. So I'm just going to continue with my jar. And it's really easy. I'm going to use my pineapple vinegar because that's what I used here. And I can tell you I loved it. Now you can make this with any kind of vinegar you want. I have, of course, my apple cider vinegar. I have garlic, white wine vinegar. I have red wine vinegar. I've got all kinds, but I even have lemon vinegar. That makes a good vinaigrette. But I'm gonna use my pineapple. I'm gonna show y'all how I do it, because it's really good stuff. It makes such a refreshing salad. You feel good after you eat it. So what I'm gonna start with is three tablespoons of vinegar. And like I said, I'm gonna use my pineapple vinegar that I made. So there's three tablespoons. And I'll tell y'all uh, something else y'all don't know about us. We used to raise Texas registered long home cattle. And I tell you, between me and Mr. Brown and all the kids, I think it was one of the most uh, fun we ever had raising anything on the farm. Because we did live on a Pretty good sized farm raising the kids and uh, we really love the cattle. I'm telling you they are some of the the prettiest, the most hardy tough cattle. I think we lost one calf out of the years that we had them and it was a big bull calf and he was huge and he just had a hard time being born and that was the only calf I remember ever losing. The cattle were they, they were just such loving cattle and they knew, kind of like dogs, they kind of knew who their people were and who weren't, and who belonged on the farm and who didn't. They knew the dogs. If there was a stray dog that would come across the, the pasture, they would, they'd go after them. But our dogs, um, they didn't pay no attention to them because they knew they belonged there. They're just smart. I just loved them. We all did. Okay, I got three tablespoons of my pineapple vinegar, and I'm going to put a tablespoon of uh, Dijon mustard. And this is uh, coarse ground. That's what I like, but you can use just regular Dijon. So that's a tablespoon of mustard. And I need uh, a whole tablespoon of honey. And this is my brother-in-law's honey from his beehive. And he has some really, really good honey. My daughter-in-law has really good honey. I'm out of her honey. And I know she's probably going to make a lot more this year because her bees have done really good. Okay, that's a tablespoon of honey. I need about a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. And I'm using my pink salt. I need the eighth of a teaspoon of pepper. Now this is all to taste too. If you like a little bit more pepper or whatever, you can put it in there. And let's see, I've got some, some of my homegrown garlic that I've minced up. Now I'm going to put, oh, probably a teaspoon. I don't want it to be too overwhelming. And my garlic, it done really good last year. And we replanted some back in the fall, and it's gotten really tall. It's, it's really doing good. So I'm hoping by July or June, I'm hoping to have some really big garlic, but we'll see. Okay, so I got my vinegar, I got my mustard, salt and pepper, garlic, honey. So all we need now is a, a half of a cup of olive oil. You can use any kind of oil you choose, olive oil, avocado oil, vegetable oil, whichever you want. And uh, I'm going to pour this in here. Now you can do this in a small food processor or something like that and get it... 
good and mixed up, but I just do it in a mason jar. And I'm going to just combine this up real good. Now I've got another review that I want to show y'all because somebody asked me about it. And it's over my linen bread bags that I had bought. And I'm going to tell y'all, these weren't cheap, but I had some points on my Amazon Prime. And I was just going down through there and I thought, now what's something that I've been wanting but wouldn't spend the money on? And it was the linen bread bags. Because I'm trying to get away from wrapping my bread, you know, my homemade bread or whatever, in plastic. But uh, it comes with tote. And uh, they're just pretty little linen bags. And I did use them because, in fact, when I, the video where I made the cinnamon raisin bread, I had three loaves. I put uh, two in the freezer. Then I kept one out, of course. Me and Mr. He loved it. Me and Mr. Brown ate on that for three days. I wrapped the loaf in wax paper and stuck it in the linen bag. Pulled the drawstring and kept it on the counter. The bread stayed good. Now, did it stay soft? The third day, you know that homemade bread starts getting kind of hard. And even, especially if it's artesian bread. It does work, but I don't think that your bread, it's gonna, not going to be moldy, but I think it's going to be hard by, by after a week. Um, I don't regret getting them because I'll keep using them. But they do work. But you know how hard my bread is. It don't stay soft very long. So anyway, that's my review on that. I'm glad I got them. I'm glad I got them. I'm going to shake this up just one more time. And I've got me just a little bit of kale in my bowl. I love kale. Kale's really good for you. And I'm going to show you how I keep my kale. I buy it in big bags organic kale from Walmart. Our Walmart does keep it. What am I do? And just make sure before you use this that you shake it up good every time because everything's going to kind of settle to the bottom. <coughs> but I'm just going to take my vinaigrette and I'm going to drizzle just a little over the top. And then I'm going to take my clean fingers and I'm just going to rub my kale with that. I don't want to just pour it on there. I want to rub that kale with it. And you can taste it as you go. That's such good. It's so good. It's just so refreshing. And I know by summertime, this is the kind of dressing you want to use. You don't want anything really heavy because it's so hot outside. It's so good. So that turned out good again. I think y'all really gonna like it. And I'll put the recipe down there, the description box. Not very many ingredients, and it's really good. Now, there's one more thing y'all didn't know about us. We used to raise goats, herd of goats. That was back we first got married, because we only had Brandon, my oldest son. He was little. It was a herd of goats, and my brother-in-law had a herd of self. He had a herd of goats, too. We had them up at a different farm, big farm. Them goats could go anywhere they wanted to. But you know goats. Well, here in Arkansas, we are so blessed to have so many beautiful rivers. And just here, where I live, there's a living point, there's Spring River, Strawberry River, uh, White River, Current River. I could just, I could go on and on and on. I need to sit down and write a list one day. And we're so close to all these rivers. That's why we're so blessed to have fresh fish all the time. Me and Mr. Brown love fresh bass and walleye. We could eat it every day probably. We just love it. We don't never buy fish out anywhere. Because um, he's a good fisherman. He keeps us in fish. But uh, we used to, at one point, have all these goats. We had them on this big farm. Okay, 
what I'm getting to is across from this big farm, across the highway, there was a canoe rental. And it's called Woody's Canoe Rental. And he wasn't, he hadn't been there too long because this is what he'd done. He'd went out there and planted, I don't know how many brand new young trees. I can't remember what trees they were. But anyways, our goats got out. They could have went to the back 40 any time, but they got out, went across that highway, every one of them, and went down there and ate on all them new trees. The bark. Well, I can't remember who it was, if it was David or brother-in-law, who it was, but somebody called Danny and said, Danny, we're fixing to have to buy a bunch of trees. And Danny said, why? And he said, because the goats got over there and chewed on them. Well, we got the goats back across the road, and uh, there's a moth. Y'all been having trouble with moths this winter? We have. But anyways, um, I got the goats back. But Woody, the guy that I'm on the, the canoe rental, he didn't get up too upset with us. He didn't charge us or nothing, but as years went on, these trees grew to be some of the beautiful trees, and uh, so the goats didn't do too much damage to them. But you know how goats are. If you raised any, they can be a pain. They really can. And we did raise a few sheep. The kids love the sheep. Um, sheep are, you know, you have to be careful because they can get sick pretty easy. But uh, my grandpa and I were raised a bunch of hogs. Uh, he would even process his own hogs. So, I mean, there's so many things, so many stories that we could tell. And we will as time goes on. Another thing I want to show y'all that I want to share with you, because this video is getting too long. This is how people save me their big jars. This is how I store lettuce and uh, my kale and stuff. Now what I want to share with you is this stuff that I found. Well, I seen this on TV. It's called Fresh Paper. A lady invented this several years ago. Now. These sheets, there's eight sheets in a bag. And I believe it was $8.99 or $9.99 for eight of them. This is what, excuse me, this is what they look like. I think that vinaigrette made me drunk. <laughs> but anyways, this is what the sheets look like. These sheets are organic. They're made out of organic spices. Now, it will not tell you what spice is on here because she's got the patent on it. And, you know, if she give the ingredients out, everybody be making them. But there's eight of them. And they say that they'll last uh, up to a month in your refrigerator. So what I do is I take one and I put it in my jar. See if I can get it back in there. With whatever I've got in there, my kale, my spinach, or my lettuce. You see it just sticking in the side there. Now... I don't wash my, my lettuce or kale or anything before I put it in my jars because I don't want any moisture in there. I wash it after I take it out before I eat it. Of course, put it in my lettuce spinner. And another thing they tell you not to do is to put a tight lid on it because your lettuce and stuff needs to breathe. It needs to stay dry and it needs to breathe. So what I do is I just take a paper towel and rubber band and that's how I store my lettuce and stuff in the refrigerator. I've had this kale for a week, and it's just as good as the day I bought it. We're going to see how, how far I can get with it, because I have two jars of these. I will be cooking some here sooner or later, but I love eating just raw, fresh kale, and it's really good for you. So, I got these off Amazon. Like I said, there's eight of them. I got... One in each of my crisper drawers in the uh, refrigerator because I got apples, I've got cabbage, and different stuff in there. Now, what you have to do is do not leave your, your vegetables in the plastic wrap that come from the store. Take it out, just put it in there, and put your, your uh, fresh paper in there with it. And so far, it's worked. I don't know. I'm going to see how many days I can get out of that cabbage because I'm not ready to cook it yet. But anyways, that's just another review on that. And I'm, I'm glad for it. I'm glad I found it. 
because we live so far out that we cannot we cannot run to the store to get fresh produce every time we need it. That's why I love summertime because I can just go out my back door and get what I want. But you also have you also have to keep it fresh. You know, you keep it in the refrigerator. If it draws any kind of moisture or anything, it wants to start going bad. But these fresh papers do work. So far they've worked for me. But anyways, I just want to give you a review on a few things. Whoops. What I have done and have worked, and that's really good. Um, and just tell you a few things that maybe you didn't know about me, Mr. Brown. And there's a whole lot. I'm 55 and he's 57, I think. And uh, we've lived a, a good long life. And I wouldn't change none of it. But anyways, if you get a chance to can some fresh fruit that's uh, that can be canned, uh, do it. It's worth it. It really is. Because now I've got shelf-stable pineapple and oranges and uh, different things like that. So strawberries, just everything like that. And y'all have to try this vinaigrette. It's delicious. A lot of people, when they make a salad, and I'm the same way, you'll load your salad on your plate, and then you'll just pour your dressing all over it. And But if you'll take it, especially vinaigrettes, if you'll take your fingers or whatever and just kind of massage that stuff into your your leaves, you just won't believe the difference. I'll probably stand here and eat this whole bowl. Anyways, I love you guys. It's Saturday here. We had freezing rain last night, and it's not supposed to warm up very much today, but I'm so ready for garden time. I'm ready to get my hands in the dark and get started. How about y'all? Well, guys, I hope y'all enjoy this video. I enjoy just talking to y'all. Thanks for coming into my kitchen, and uh, God bless everybody, and we'll talk at you later. Bye-bye.